Hello again, uh, welcome back. In my previous video, um, I was showing how to uh, essentially create uh, different stadiums, different parameters for um, a stadium creator, uh, how, to, how to change different section uh, toggles for lower bowl, upper bowl, those types of things, using Dynamo for Revit, and then uploading that to the cloud so that the design team can kind of analyze and, and design what's going on in the stadium. Uh, in this instance, um, we're going to take a couple steps back from uh, conceptual design back into programming and show how Dynamo can be useful for that as well. So let's take a quick look here. Um, so I've just got a small section cut out of a, of a Revit file right now uh, of the model, but using Dynamo I can kind of expose quite a bit more of the, the data that's actually going on in this model. Uh, in this instance, we want to know programmatic data. Um, obviously, this is giving me a boundary of all the all the rooms, therefore giving me area, perimeter, all this other this data that's going on that uh, is quite useful, and, and we're really not um, using it to the best of our abilities. So, something we can do is create a room schedule, uh, as you're all uh, hopefully familiar with, and then base some parameters around what the owner is asking, and then what Revit is producing and then giving us a pass or fail if we meet that. Now we can we can tell it to do anything we want. If, if we want it to hit that uh, if, if we want to hit that 80 square feet uh, straight on, which is pretty rare that you hit the program exactly, um, we, can, we can be within um, oh I want to say plus or minus 10 percent so it's giving me a pass um, if the square footage is too large or too small. Uh, if I start to go up Above that, of course, it's going to be too large because I've I've gone past the 10% plus or minus. Um, if you weren't already aware, uh, Revit's been able to highlight columns uh, based on uh, algorithm, a very simple algorithm in this case of 0.9 or 1.1. 1 .1, 0 0.9 being 10% too small, 1.1 being 10% too large. Uh, so we're able to highlight those. So as you go down this column, it's it's pretty interesting. At least if if you're this type of um, numbers person. Um, am I hitting my client's square footages plus or minus 10%? Um, am I too large, too small? So hopefully as the, the user goes through this they're able to say okay I should see no red in here but if I do see red I should have good reason for it and it's within maybe 15% maybe maybe 20% and, and that's okay with the owner. Um, it's hard to convey this kind of knowledge um, instantly to somebody because all we're seeing here are numbers um, but if we if we can take Dynamo and use it to its uh, full advantage, we can actually kind of break this down in a different way. Um, as a matter of fact, I don't even have to know Revit to be able to fill in this yellow column right here. Uh, so, which is going to be quite a bit of fun for for everybody. So let's um, do two things here. There's some people that might not know that you can highlight in Revit. I'll show you how to do that real quick. So under formatting, under conditional formatting. Um, if my pass or fail uh, is too large or too small, I'm going to want it to, of course if it fails, based on this little algorithm here, I want it to give it this kind of pinkish red color so it draws my attention to it. Um, so on and so forth. So it's basically just taking um, area. Let's go ahead and take a look here. It's taking my value of program area, which is dictated by the owner and us as the experts um, and we, we want to take a value of 0.9 percent of that and then if the value is too small um, it's actually 1.1 it's the, maybe the opposite of what you think um, and then if that is greater than the area with no units and, and all this means is I've taken the square foot um, value off and just this column is this column they're identical as the Revit model changes these two change together um, I just take the square foot off and just give me basic numbers give me a pass or give me a fail. And when it does that, then it highlights in red. So the the goal of this schedule would be to get all white, uh, to have no red uh, values in here. But of course there are instances where you are uh, presumably close enough and, and you can ignore this. We're not going to change the owner requirement from you know 90, let's say, to 87 just to meet this. Uh, so if they did want 90 for that, that's fine that this is, you know, all redded out. Um, but what's interesting about this is Dino was actually reading this from a totally separate file. 
from somebody who does not know Revit, SketchUp, or, or hardly uh, any 3D modeling tools at, at that point. So uh, let's take a look at this. Uh, there's quite a bit of uh, data collected here. So if we notice we've got 100, 90, 200, 100, 90, 200. What if we're, we're going through early programmatically and uh, we've got our project manager typing these in, asking the right questions, um, getting the, the round numbers of square footage um, into, this, into these values here. And then I can always check, and if you notice, it's automatically giving me a pass-fail uh, based on the same parameters that Revit is giving me. Of course this is pass-pass. I'm definitely within 10% plus or minus of this. But if I'm not, and they needed a thousand, sorry, a thousand, it's going to give me a uh, too large, um, but not too small of a number. So I'm going to get a fail here. So wouldn't that be interesting if I could and, uh, hit save and, and watch watch this column right here? If I were to hit save in this file, now remember, pretend this is on somebody else's computer, not this computer, because um, we can easily do that uh, on the server. Anytime somebody hits save on this, so I'm going to create a little bit of a boundary here, because I'm not joking around. When I hit save, I fully expect this this value to update my Revit model. So now I know if I've passed or failed. If I've passed or failed this this value here. So as again, this would of course be um, uh, filled out appropriately along the way uh, as we're asking questions. We know this. We know these. We're, we're experts in K through 12. In this instance, we're, we're experts in hospitality. We we know these values. Uh, we use them every day, so uh, we know what's going to work and what's not. And then this column, of course, is reading live from the Revit model. So every time I hit save, I expect this 1,000, so on and so forth, to, to start cranking down. Boom! I instantly know whether or not my Revit model is uh, meeting these requirements or not. Apparently, it's not. Um, is that okay? Well, at least you have a QA process now that checks that um, as, as you go on. So what's happening in the, in the background here, let's take a look here. Zoom, scroll all the way up because I like to color code things. The Dynamo script running in the background is actually reading from this room schedule Excel file. Um, and what I've done is actually just, um, if you imagine uh, printing, printing this out and then cutting each strip of these with a pair of scissors and separating each of those values out. So we've got blue, we've got level, we've got purple, number, orange, name. Um, I don't use the department in this particular instance. Areas, this kind of turquoise color program areas, of course the, the green, or the, I'm sorry, the yellow. Um, and then areas gray, so on and so forth. Um, all I'm interested in are these two values. Uh, we can we can go further into this uh, quite a bit and, and start to use this data, but of course for this exercise we're only interested in program area and then area no units, meaning I don't have a SF square foot attached to it. Um, it's giving me an error, but it's not really giving me an error. Um, basically it's doing the exact same thing. It's saying, are you greater than or equal to um, this value and this value. So compare these two. Are you greater than or equal to? If so, zero is true, one is false, uh, vice versa, and and coordinate that by color. And then this this handy little tool um, is grabbing every single um, name, number, what level it's associated to, the area of that room, the element ID of that room, the unique ID of that room, and starting to to cut that up. And, and splice it together. So, what I'm, what I guess, what I'm getting at is, wouldn't it be nice if you could see visually uh, which which programmatic areas are working and which ones aren't, which ones are hitting their values and which ones aren't. So, um, green meaning it has, red meaning it has not, uh, gray being that you hit it straight on, which is uh, somewhat rare but not uh, impossible um, for it for it to happen. So, to be able to show this to the owner visually and say, okay. These red rooms are ones that are not meeting your program, 
um, within 10% of your square footage. The green ones are. Obviously, we want to be uh, well, all gray in, in some instance, but um, that's not not really possible. Um, but hitting the green uh, plus or minus 10% really is. Um, great, great, very useful little tool um, to be able to kind of strip out the data that we want, um, compile it, and then visually uh, demonstrate um, our expertise and de visually demonstrate um, where these consequences are happening in the building, these, these decisions of whether or not to make these spaces bigger based on the, the program requirements by the owner. A lot of the time, uh, these can be just kind of batted away with, with different explanations of, okay, well, we really don't need that kind of square footage, uh, so on and so forth. Uh, we're overestimating for it, that's fine. Um, but it's just really handy to be able to have this tool that's, that's live in Revit, um, near instantaneously live, um, as I'll, I'll demonstrate again. I'm going to make that one hit, you know, because square footage has never hit exactly, but, um, you know, even a, even a blind squirrel finds a nut every once in a while. So, and be able to hit save from, again, somebody else's computer, not necessarily this one, because it's saving to the server, and then my file is near instantaneously going to read those numbers um, as they change. You know what else is interesting? these values are changing constantly throughout the design process or the design development process and sometimes even in construction documents so to be able to keep a live uh, uh, pulse on this project um, and, and hopefully seeing all white instead of any kind of red um, is, is something we just simply don't have right now and, and I think we obviously need it um, to be able to, to meet our clients needs uh, to meet our needs um, and to be able to have a QA process that's that's fully vetted um, throughout the life of the process or throughout the life of the project. Um, so it's it's really interesting to to watch these. If I had a time lapse to kind of watch these go from red to white, pass fail, pass fail, pass fail, as they all kind of blink around as as you know five six people are in the model at, you know over the course of three or four months um, to see this kind of live in action is is really uh, interesting um, as part of our process. Okay, well, that's it. If that sounds interesting, leave a comment, If um, and uh, have a great day. Bye.